But I was wondering how you handle all the demands of your schedule. The name of the game is just trying to stay as healthy and as on schedule as possible. And uh, clearly I'm a little nasal right now. i got a cold <laughs> coming home uh, because we're traveling so much and you're exposed constantly uh, to everything. So I focus a lot on diet and, uh, and nutrition and try and stay healthy. Uh, is as well as sleep, you know, and recovery to try and uh, to try and keep going because <laughs> we're it's a pretty rigorous schedule, you know. It's uh, we we always we race on Saturdays, then we travel Sundays, and then uh, train Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, mm -hmm. Thursday off, and then or it would train Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday off, and then race again on Saturday, which is every week keeps going, and so there's always something new coming up, but uh, just trying to maintain, you know, a program and a schedule is, is our best way of, of hoping to stay healthy. So what drives you? You know, it, for me, it's uh, it's mostly just a love of the sport and that I'm hoping to share with the world, you know, when it's on the big stage in February. Uh, bobsled is so unique and, uh, and as a women's sport, it's, it's really rare to have something that requires so much speed. Um, speed and strength uh, required for, for women. Cause, you know, cause right. Like when men's sports, football, you've got a lot of big, strong, fast uh -huh. guys. And for women's sports, typically it's one or the other. And so we take track athletes uh, and put uh, size and strength on them in order to push our sleds 500 pounds that we're sprinting right. with on the ice. And so I think it's one of the most physically impressive sports uh, for female athletes around. Um, and so it's, you know, my, my love for for the sport itself is is what makes it so much fun. It's not um, just the physical aspect, but for me as a driver, I'm constantly learning and improving and trying to figure out the fastest way down a track. And so there's something new every day, a new challenge, and uh, I just really enjoy a challenge, yeah. and that's what makes it fun. How do you first get into the skeleton and racing on ice? Uh, I actually followed my brother Tim, who you met uh, a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. He kind of sought it out. We both saw it uh, in 02 at the Salt Lake Games. That was the first time skeleton was an Olympic sport. And I had just finished playing my senior season of volleyball at Portland State University and was still you know, looking for, for something to do. I didn't want to go to Europe and play professional volleyball. I'd had a pretty bad injury that kept me from, uh, from lateral movement. And so... How long did, have, did you do back home? Uh, pretty much my whole life, uh, from yeah, from uh, junior high on all the way through college. So, yeah, that was kind of my sport. So it was an interesting switch to go from indoor team sport, you know, where you're moving around a small square, <laughs> to then yeah. going outside. Yeah. And, you know, it was, it was nothing like I'd ever done. It was it was the closest it, I could liken it to was track. I used to do track and field in uh, in high That's school. What I did. Yeah, I, I won the fast the fastest. Fourth grader in the all-school oh, competition. Really? Uh -huh. Nice. Yeah, that's uh, that was um, I I enjoyed track, but I, uh, but I mainly stuck to the team sports, and that's what that I then you know uh, used to pay for school in college, and uh, and so saw saw skeleton on TV, and I saw bobsled and thought, wow, that looks great. You know, I'm big. I'm I'm fast. I can do that. And it turns out I wasn't big enough <laughs> at the time, and so. Uh, so Tim was steered into skeleton because of his size, and I just followed him out to a driving school, and then uh, that was in 0203, okay. and I've been doing it ever since. Were you into interested in sport as a young kid, or did that come later? Uh, no, ever since I was a little kid, I was always trying to do whatever my brother did. Clearly, because I followed him out to skeleton. Uh, it's, yeah, still to this day. But uh, I played pee wee soccer when I was little, and then once I got into junior high, I branched out into volleyball and basketball and track. Uh, and then in high school, kind of was tried to do the three sport thing, which got pretty intense, and then eventually just focused on volleyball. Mm -hmm. So yeah, always been really, really into sports. Which one do you call? Do you call it bobsled or bobsled? Uh, we call it bobsled, and this, in, but I think we are the only. It's just in the U.S. that we call it bobsled. In Canada, they call it bobsled. In Europe, they call it bobsled. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but I, yeah, I don't know how, I don't know how that changed <laughs> in the yeah. U.S. because, yeah, it does sound a little bit, uh, a little bit more high class when it's Bob Slay. Right. <laughs> but either way, it's a nitty gritty high speed sport. Right. I've seen some pretty cool, um, videos of you zooming down the track on your Bob Slay. Could you describe the feeling of that? You know, it's, uh, it's one of those things where 
you, you can describe it, but until you feel it, it doesn't really make sense. You know, it doesn't click in your brain. For me as a driver, at least I'm sitting up, and so I'm taking all the G-forces and all the speed. I can see it, and I know where I'm going. Uh, is a brakeman. There's, I do have a teammate in the back that helps me push and then gets in, and they ride with their head between their knees, and so they're taking all the G-forces and just right. getting <laughs> flattened into the sled. Um, and for me, what I'm focusing on as I go down the track is, uh, is, is right then, at that moment, what do I need to do to be where I want to be and to find a faster line? So as I'm entering and exiting turns, I'm thinking, all right, this is where I want to be now. This is, I need to ease up or increase my steer to be here and, uh, and just focusing on where I need to be. But that said, you still have the intermediate thoughts between there's saying, well, I'm going fast. <laughs> this is still fast. <laughs> Yeah, so it's pretty pretty quick decision making. Once in a bobsled, you're going. If you think about something, it's already 30 meters past. So it's all about anticipation. Right. And what what is the cool? In your opinion, what is the coolest thing about bobsled? You know, uh, I think it's just it's the speed and and uh, and just the technical uh, difficulty of it. You know, it's the fact that it's a really raw athletic sport with you know huge, strong, phenomenal athletes. But then, as soon as I get in the sled, as soon as we're done pushing, I have to load the sled and completely zone 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 in and and focus on all the minute steers that I want to do. So. Um, that, that I think that's my favorite part is that you know it gets to combine a really physical sport mm -hmm. with something very technical that uh, that takes a lot of focus. Right. Yeah. And what do you think is the most challenging part of boxing? Uh, I think that you know that's also that's the best part and it's also the most challenging part because it's so easy you know in life in in general to lose track of what you're doing in your goal. So if I'm in the track and if I take any time to get mad about what I did or if I made a mistake then that is going to compound and it's going to mess up my next turn. And so you have to stay focused on that moment right then and what you need to do then and just whatever happened, let it go. It's behind you. And by that time, you know, it's 30, 40 meters behind you because right. you're going so fast. And so it's just a matter of, of letting that go and, and staying focused on where I want to be and, uh, and what I want to do. Right. So, and that and also the travel schedule is very difficult. <laughs> Do you have a fondest memory of bobsledding? You know, I do. It was uh, actually last year, my, it was my first World Cup race uh, mm -hmm. in bobsledding. It happened to be uh, the first race that we had on the new Olympic track in Whistler. And so uh, I'd heard all sorts of horror stories about how fast it was, fastest track mm -hmm. in the world, and so de technical and so difficult. And so, uh, it, I mean, it was, it was tough enough getting there and mm -hmm. learning a new track, because when you haven't been on a track, you're trying to learn left, right, left, right, which way it's going, but also, you know, all the steers that you need to do, uh, not just to go fast, but to survive, <laughs> you know, it's the know. first week of survival, and so uh, that was a really intense two weeks of learning that track, and then uh, my brakeman, Emily, and I ended up uh, podiuming in sixth place um, against some of the, uh, the most, uh, you know, decorated, amazing bobsled drivers in the world, so that was pretty huge for us yeah. to show up, and boom, first World Cup, sixth place on the new Olympic track. It, uh, it was pretty exciting and just has me, you know, even more excited for the games in February. Right. And so I have a question. Are you um, the type who takes chances a lot? Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, for me, uh, you know, I'm not even sure if I consider it chances. If I see something I want to do, I think to myself, I can do that. And yeah. I go and I do it and I do whatever it takes to make it happen.